Boom! We're live, man. We are live. Yeah. Jamie Morang, man. I'm dropping some, uh, me and Jamie are going to be dropping some lunchtime value for you today. Jamie, welcome to the show, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. I appreciate you having me on. It's my first, uh, first time video blogging, so I really appreciate first, you having me on. Yeah, first of many, probably, right? Ho hopefully, yes. Yes. Well, good, dude. I'm, I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad to have you on and, and certainly uh, excited to share your story here today. I know a lot's been going on uh, the, last, uh, the last week or so for you. And, um, you know, last night, uh, well, Monday I had David DeVoe on the show. And, uh, you know, David told me, he said, you got to get Jamie on the show. So you got to watch out for this guy, man. And so I, I really want to dig into why, why, um, why you're having so much success. I think, you know, first of all, that you, you've, you've been licensed since 2012, but you've really only been full time in the business for the past couple of years. And um, your business has really taken off. So I, I, I know folks that are tuning in uh, really want to hear more about, you know, how you went from, you know, kind of zero to 16 million in, in, in you know, the short three years that you did. Um, so why don't we do this? I always start off the show by talking a little bit about my guests and their past. So share with me your story, kind of walk me through, walk our audience through, you know, your transition from, you know, um, where you were at into real estate into where you're at now. Sure. Yeah. Great. Um, so yeah, my name is Jamie Morang. Um, I'm actually born and raised in, in Bergen County, which is about 20 miles north of Hoboken. Um, so I actually graduated uh, hospitality from Delaware. So, uh, you know, I was certainly not uh, in, in the real estate in industry from the beginning. Uh, I worked for my family business, which uh, is a fourth generation fam uh, metal fabrication company, which is 20 miles west of here. Um, so I was there for about six years before I went full time into real estate. Um, you know, and I got my license in 2012, just as a part time gig, just to make some extra money on the side. Uh, and, you know, at that time, I really didn't know if the family business was something that, you know, I would be in, uh, you know, for the rest of my career. And, you know, it turned out to be the best decision I've made to, to get that license, not even knowing, you know, I, I, I didn't even have it in my mind to, to go full time real estate, you know, for for years up until, you know, a year and a half ago. OK. All right. Charles Blakely is asking, are you an individual agent? Yes, I'm an individual agent. And now I'm at the point where, you know, I'm, I'm trying to delegate, you know, I'm learning how to delegate. I have a transaction uh, part transaction, transaction coordinator part time. So I'm really trying to figure everything out right now, how to go from, you know, 15 deals to 30 deals this year. So very stressful, but certainly, um, you know, at the same time, you know, it's a good problem to have and, and uh, trying to figure it all out here uh, with the help. Of, you know, and, and I have the great people. You know, at EXP above me here, Dave, Brett, Jeff, uh, Seku, all those guys to help me out and, and try to grow if I have any questions. Yeah, dude, that's awesome, man. So, so talk to me a little bit about um, your kind of your first year in the business. Um, what what company were you with? Yeah, so I started out. Um, I actually put my license with the the guy that sold me uh, our condo here in Hoboken. So it just was one of those things. I I hung out with him, and I wasn't really serious about who I went with. Uh, at that time. But um, I've been two years with Keller. And before that, I was with a smaller company based out of Hoboken, Prestige Property Group, okay. um, mostly doing rentals from 2012 to 2016. I was really doing rentals. Um, at Prestige, they showed me a way to uh, do luxury rentals where I'd get uh, essentially, you know, one month split, right? So I'd, I'd pretty much... Um, I pretty much meet the client at the building. Uh, they'd handle all the paperwork and I'd get, you know, a, a one month commission check, uh, which was great for me because, you know, with a full time job, uh, the paperwork aspect, not having to do that was perfect. So, you know, those years I, I built from about 10,000 a year up to about 30,000 a year uh, part time just doing rentals. And then I think in 2016, that really changed when uh, I got a few sales, a few lucky deals, and I started to work with buyers uh, as well in 2016. Okay. So when, like in 2016, you know, you, you, you kind of jumped in and, and you, you, you didn't know what you didn't know at that time, right? You were still working some of the, the rental portion of the business. I'm curious though, at what point in your career did you really start to, to think, you know, I, I can crush it in residential real estate and I can make more money doing this. Like, when did that start to resonate with you? 
Yeah. So it's a crazy story, but, uh, what had happened was I was going through some issues with the family business. And, you know, my goal was to take over that company. You know, my father's still there running it. Uh, and I was in the sales end of things, but, uh, we just had different visions. And, um, there was a time in 2017 in about February where I just knew I, I had to get out, you know, I had to leave and move on. And really there was too many years there spent, you know, just status quo. Right. So, uh, I think in 2017, I realized that I, I had to do some transition. I have two boys. So at the time I had a two year old and uh, a newborn, right? So it was very difficult for me to, to really, you know, kind of map out how I do this, right? How, how do I transition part-time to full-time? Uh, so really 2016, 2017, I built up buyers. You know, I, I was converting about seven, eight buyers a year, uh, which helped me. Um, so long story short, um, in 2017, um, in, in summer, we had a, my family was living here in Hoboken. We had a toxic mold issue uh, in our in our apartment we were renting. Oh, yeah. It was it was devastating. Uh, we got displaced, and uh, at that point, I knew I wanted to leave the company, and it was a hard decision. But you know, I sat down with my wife and said, "Hey, listen, this is our opportunity, right? To 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 move on. Obviously, I'm unhappy where I am. So, what happened is we actually moved in with my mother-in-law." For, for the last year, up until like three months ago, we were living with my mother-in-law. Last year was my first year full-time as an agent. So I was commuting about 45 miles to Hoboken every day. Jeez, dude. And, um, but it was a blessing though. The, the toxic mold issue became a blessing because it forced us to make a decision. And as you know, Mike, you know, not, there's, there's never a perfect time, right? To, to jump full in or, you know, th there's never a perfect time. You can always make excuses for yourself as to not do it. But that was the, that was the breaking point where I just said, Hey, let's do this. And my wife was on board and, you know, we made it happen. Um, that being said, I got into Mike Ferry coaching. A few of my friends here, I know DeVoe was a big Mike Ferry guy. Um, I have a buddy, John Scipioni in town that um, he's doing like 40 million a year. And he's, he's a big Mike Ferry guy. So I, I just signed up for Mike Ferry, went to the retreat last summer while I was still working for the family business. So I really left the family business in September, October of uh, 2017, um, you know, and, and just started prospecting, you know, three hours every morning consistently and just built my business just based off of, you know, my back was against the wall, right? I, I, I wanted to get the family out of, of course, my mother-in-law's and, and back here in Hoboken, which where we are now. Um, so that's kind of my story of how that, how we really did, did all this. Yeah. This uh, that, that, that there's a lot there, man, that I want to talk about. Um, first and foremost, I want to talk about, you know, it had to be difficult and, and, and I'm not going to dig too far into this because it's, it's, it's your personal business, but it had to be challenging for you um, to kind of, to make that decision to, to, to ultimately leave the family business. Talk a little bit about that, man. And, and you don't have to get into a lot of detail, but just talk about if, you know, how challenging that was for you. Yeah. I mean, I think in 2014, when, when Carter, our first was born, it was really, it really kicked my ass in, in the sense of, you know, what am I doing here? Trying to change culture was because the, the family business were over a hundred years old. Right. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, culture, battles there of, of where the company's going. So I just had to sit down with my father in, in 2016, I was making just as much money in real estate as I was at the family business. So I said, well, what am I doing? You know, what am I actually doing here? Um, you know, and I pretty much sat down with him and said, Hey, listen, I want to be, a, you know, an equal partner or work towards that. Um, you know, and, and that's what I see the vision for myself. And, you know, I've worked hard, you know, these, these past five, six years, I've worked in the shop as a kid. And, you know, is that something that, you know, is going to happen, right? So I couldn't get a straight answer and, and, you know, months went by. So, you know, at that time, I just, we just had to make the decision, right? We just had yeah. to force it in our own hands and, and really, um, you know, go jump right into this, this yeah. real estate thing. You, what stands out to me, it's, it's, it's interesting, like everybody has these stories, right? But everybody has these pitfalls in their, in their story in, on their journey. 
Uh, and, you know, yours was, you know, in that you were in the family business, right? And, and then you had the challenge of, you know, is this something I want to do for my future? You didn't get the straight answer, you know, so that's pitfall number one. Pitfall number two is, you know, you had the toxic mold issue. Um, pitfall number three is, is uh, you know, and maybe this isn't a pitfall, but it certainly provides some motivation is having to move in with your, was it your mother-in-law or your mom? Mother-in-law, those, yeah. Those are all drivers, right? So ultimately you talked about this, you alluded to it before I even said anything, but you said uh, uh, to the toxic mold issue is it was a blessing, right? Yeah, it really was. These were all things that were ultimately lighting a fire under you to help you get to the spot you're in now and then also help determine the trajectory that you're on and where you're going, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It was it was a huge blessing. And, and you know, here in 2019, I mean, just flash forward from last year at this time, I mean, it was a completely different story. I was sucking wind for about three or four months early last year because I dropped the buyers. I dropped all of the buyer side to focus on listings. And, and I was like, shit, you know, three or four months down the line, I had no deals, right? I, I had very little deals going on. But as last year, spring started to turn around, then, you know, deals started happening. And, and that prospecting, keep in mind, you know, as you know, it, it takes months, right, to see the, see the rewards of that. So um, I was, lear I, last year was just a huge learning experience for me. And uh, you know, it was just a battle, which I, you know, I loved it. it. It just was torturous, but at the same time, just all the hard work and, you know, the consistency of the prospecting. One thing I will say is that, you know, showing up is, is most of the battle, right? If you could show up every day and prospect for three hours, start at eight o'clock and, and be the first one to these expireds, guess what? You're going to have a greater chance of success, right? Um, you know, so that's what I did. Uh, I, I was joined a role play group as well uh, through the Mike Ferry organization. And I, I role play Monday through Thursday, 7.30 to 8, you know, right before I prospect. So that kind of juices me up for the day. Yeah. Yeah. So talk, let, let's 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 start digging into the meat and potatoes of your success. Right. Uh, a guy now that's, you know, on track to do uh, in your in your what, third or fourth year. And you, you'll do what was your goal this year? Share that with the audience, if you don't mind. Yeah. So last year I did about, my goal was 12 million. I did, did about a little over 7 million last year, 15 yeah. deals. I think six on the sales side, eight or nine on the buy side. Yeah. So this year I'm trying to, I'm trying to go from, you know, 15 to 31, you know, so 200 GCI up to 402 GCI. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, that's, that in itself right now, I'm, I'm still learning. I was you know, texting Brett, Jeff, you know, the other night, you know, eight deals pending now. That's half of my production last year. So I'm awesome. going through a lot of a lot of uh, transition now to, to say, like, how do you know, how do I manage this all? So um, that's that's kind of where I'm at now. Yeah. And you're in good company, brother. Just so you know, you, you got you got great resources that you can rely on to help you get to where you need to go. And, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about your transition story. But talk specifically about um, talk. And I, I kind of know what you're going to say here, because it sounds like you and I are cut from the same cloth. I mean, I built my business prospecting as well, showing up at eight o'clock every single day. Um, and, you know, if I wasn't on an appointment, I was prospecting. That was just what I did. So talk to me uh, Monday morning. 7.30, and then, and then walk me through a, t a typical day for you. Yeah, so um, the perfect day for me is wake up, you know, 5.30, hit the gym at 6, 6.15 for an hour, um, you know, get that, get that body flowing because without that gym workout, I don't feel like myself. You know, I feel, you know, obviously I have more energy if I'm working out before. So I get to work 7.30, role play 7.30 to 8.00. Uh, eight to 11 is really where I'm, I'm trying to make 20 to 25 contacts uh, a day. You know, I start with the expireds, um, got a little too comfortable with the expireds actually last year. Uh, Cause that was most of my business. But... Elaborate on that. What do you mean? Well, I found myself, you, you get used to calling strangers and stuff, right. And, and you kind of avoid, uh, you know, all the other forms of prospecting your sphere, you know, your whatever for sale by owner. So, Really, for me now, it's just to make sure that I hit all of the, you know, all of the forums, you know. So, uh, yeah. That's so, I mean, by the way, Jamie, you just dropped a golden nugget, and you didn't even know it, man. Because those of you who are listening to this, who are prospecting, 
because the, the, the most dangerous part about what you just said is we can tell ourselves we're doing the right activity when in reality we are actually avoiding uh, the specific categories of our business. Yeah. Right? Um, and, and not only that, but um, just to kind of piggyback on top of that is I got so nice. I got so busy calling strangers that I failed to call my database. Right. So, so, so there's a lot we could dig into there, but I, I just wanted to, to, to kind of preface that before we moved on. So go ahead. You're, you, you said you got too, you, you got too comfortable calling the expires and then you realized you needed to stop that and you started adding it for sub by owners. What else did you do? Yeah, I think, you know, again, I still have those issues and go back and forth with it mindset wise. But, yeah, I, I am at the point where we need to be versatile, right, and flexible. So, um, you know, anything from expi I start off with expired, it's called for sale by owners, uh, you know, trying to hit my sphere, five to ten of my sphere a day, um, you know, and then mix in, you know, email marketing and all that stuff um, yep. with my database. Okay, so is most of your stuff right now? Is it sounds like you 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 don't probably not working a lot of buyers, are you at this point? Well, actually, we current to date, I have three sale three sellers and five buyers. So yeah, the, the okay. buyer side picked up because like last year, I I didn't get any referrals. Right, it was all strangers. So this year, what's happening is friends are reaching out, and and you know that's a good problem to have, right? Friends that see you doing well and and see you putting in the work. Uh, you know, that are calling you. So, you know, those friends, I'm, I'm happy to help out nice. you know, purchase property. And some of them need to sell as well. So we're, we're getting both ends with the sell buy. Okay. And, and another thing I wanted to, to mention also is, is, is you said your, your goal is to get 20 to 25 contacts daily. And, and I just, I, I want to reiterate that he does not mean dials folks. He means contacts. And so, you know, that, that's what moves the meter, right? Like I, I'll show you my little sheet right here. This is my little, this is my little generic sheet. I don't know if you can see that, right? Yeah. I'm old school, man. Listen, I'm old school. And this one says dials. This one says contacts. This one says nurtures, says appointments and lender referrals, right? Yeah. And, and so he's talking about contacts, guys, not dials. Cause you can, you can make a hundred dials and not get it and, and get 20 people, but you know, your numbers, right? You know that if you get 20 contacts, you're going to get a certain amount of nurtures and you're going to get a certain amount of appointments, right? You mm -hmm. know, that you know, your numbers. Yeah. And that's yeah. probably what Mike Ferry taught you, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So talk, talk to me a little bit. You've got eight other contract. You said five are buyers, three are sellers. Um, talk to me about uh, where the majority of your business is coming from right now. So majority of my business right now is obviously built off that prospecting, the expired, the first sale by owner. So that's still a portion of that business, but now I'm getting more referrals in. So people I know are contacting me. Uh, so, so a mix of both expireds and, and for sale by owners. Uh, one thing I will say though, is last year, and this is good for all the new agents out there too. I think calling, calling for, I, I use Vortex. I'm not sure if you, you've used that before the Vortex system. I think it's like a mojo or. Yeah. 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 Um, the triple line dialer. I just have one dialer, so I'm just calling one dialer at a time. But um, some of the best numbers, some of the best contacts I have right now that I'm working with uh, have been off wrong numbers. So okay. I'm not sure if you if you experience that or other agents do, but some of the, you know, I called one guy last week and he was a developer in Manhattan. And, and now we're looking at, you know, $10 million land deals in Jersey City. So just the, just putting in the work and getting callbacks from people you don't expect and, and, and all that stuff is surprising for me. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I would say wrong numbers, people calling back, needing assistance. Hey, you got the wrong property, but I have a need. And also too, um, for rent by owners have been big uh, last year for me. Yeah. Because you find out that not a lot of people call them. They see the price point of the rental and they say, why call that? Right. But the, the fact is that some of these some of these people could be, you know, 10 unit, 10, 10 unit building owners. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's that's been huge for me last year. Just building, you know, coming from value and, and, and you know, making sure that I help them rent their properties out and then getting getting that sale when they do do uh, do decide to. OK, so walk me through this, man, because everybody's got a system in place. Right. And you've got a system that's working for you right now. You're in a different place in your business than I am in my business and so forth and so on. But 
Um, let's say your call-in expires, right? Um, you come in, your call-in expired, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, you're dialing through them, you get one on the hook, right? You, and they say, you know, um, I'm interested in selling. I'm not setting an appointment right now, but, you know, I want you to call me back in, in 30 days. I'm going to be ready to put it back on the market. I'm doing some things, right? So where you do you do you use Vortex as your CRM, or are you taking that lead then and doing something else with it? Yeah, so that's the problem now. I, I am I'm looking at CRMs. I know for me XP they have a Curator. Is that what it's called? Curator. Oh, uh, we got conversion and conversion. I'm sorry, conversion. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to look into that system. But I was checking out Salesforce Curator. But uh, I'm putting them into uh, Constant Contact now and, and using that as a resource. Yeah. Uh, I got off of Boomtown last year. Um, it just was too much for me to handle uh, at this stage of my career. So. Uh, right now, the CRM is something I'll look into, but I've had a lot of success with Salesforce before yeah. um, in, in that aspect. But yeah. to your point, I would say, you know, if, a, if, a, if an expired says to me, hey, call me back in, in a month or so, you know, it's really about, you know, finding the motivation, right, uh, of what they're trying to do, where they need to be, you know, what the time frame is. So if you could, if you could drill down on motivation, then you know, and, and then, you know, just let them know about the market. And, you know, if it's a better time to sell now, you know, if you can net more money now rather than waiting, would that be an option for you? Right. Yeah. So a lot of those conversations just go like that. And, you know, if I get someone open and, and I could, I could usually set the appointment with someone that's, that's, uh, that's motivated. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you, I, I, like, I know, I love the fact that you're a grinder man. And I love the fact that Brett and Dave were both, phone their grinders on the phone man I'm like me because I can appreciate that and but the you know to your to that I would say that does, isn't it great though when a friend calls you up and they give you a referral uh, and you just like it's just there's you, you go in there's no competition uh, and it's like you know they want to do business with you and so what what are you doing now um, and, and whatever you're doing is working because you've got five SOIs under contract what are you doing specifically now? to let your SOI know that you're in real estate and you're accepting referrals? Uh, well, one, you know, we're, we're calling them more often now versus last year. So we're just calling a follow up, uh, you know, giving them market updates coming from a place of value, you know, telling them the market shift a little bit. So that's been in the conversation lately. Um, and just coming from a place of value, whether they know whether they need contractors, they need supplier support, um, again, offering value over the phone is pretty much yeah. one of the, one of the methods I'm using. Um, and also too, a lot of email marketing too, you know, I have a whole, I probably have like seven to 800 people in my database now, but a lot of email marketing I do to my sphere and I could tag them based on, you know, location or whether they're buyer or seller. So I could, I could niche market to, you know, each sector of my database. Okay. So walk me through the anatomy of a, of a phone call to your SOI, right? Because I'm assuming you're not just saying, you know, hi, this is, this is Jamie. You know, I'm in real estate. Do you know anybody who wants to buy or sell, right? It doesn't look like that. What does yeah. that look like for you? Walk me through the anatomy of that call. Yeah. So, so, hey, uh, hey, you know, hey, Mike, I haven't spoken to you in a while. How you doing? You know, that, that type of thing. Hey, Mike, I haven't spoken to you in a while. How you doing? Uh, this is a business call. Do you have a minute? And so I, I asked for the referral right away. Who do you know that's looking to buy or sell in the next few months? Yeah. Right, right off the bat, if I have a good relationship with them, if I keep in contact with them, they know the call's coming. So that would be the first thing, thing I asked for. And, you know, if they don't, if they don't say they know anybody off the bat, I'll say, I, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time to think about that. You know, and tell me, you know, how's it going over on one, two, three Main Street, right? How, how are you guys doing? Yeah. Whatever it means at the moment. So it, it's a basic call, I think. Um, and I think it's it's consistency too, right? So if you go too long, it's it's more awkward as, as it, it, you bridge the gap. But yeah. I like to start off uh, personally. But again, I like to get quick to the point to why, you know, why I'm making the call yeah. as well. Well, it makes sense, man. Like for me, I'm thinking of it through the lens of people I haven't talked to or in, in a year or two to three years. And certainly if you make that call and you go right into asking for referrals, it is a little awkward. But I think to your point, what you're saying is you're maintaining that relationship so that when you make that call, it's everyone's perfectly comfortable with that question because you've maintained such a great relationship. Correct? Yeah. 
Exactly. Exactly. And I feel more comfortable now calling them because the, the business was built off of strangers, right? So yeah. I almost felt bad calling my sphere right away when I wasn't established. I don't know mindset wise, but I feel like I, I'm more confident now because I was, I was able to, to create my own business from nothing and, and now give back to the, those people that I know and they could see me doing good business in the area. Yeah. So how does the Jamie Meringue of today feel versus the Jamie Meringue when he was moving <laughs> to his mother-in-law's apartment? Like, it, like what's the difference in your life now, dude? Yeah, man, it's, it's completely different. Um, we're happy to be back here. We've, we've lived in Hoboken for over 10 years. So it was really where our sons, where our, where our kids grew up. And you, know, you could even see the mentality and the mindset change going from a suburban area. Uh, an urban area from a suburban area and, and the activities and, and all those things to do. So from a standpoint of lifestyle, it's great, man. We, we love, we love it here. Um, and of course, you know, I, I'm going through challenges. I mean, I'm not, I'm not at this stage that Dave DeVoe, Brett Secor are at, and they have the, the big team and they've been there, you know, where they were five, six, seven years ago, but I'm still going through the grind every day and uh, just trying to get better, uh, you know, every day moving forward here. And, yeah. and, and go back to the things last year, you know, focus and go back to the things last year that, that, you know, brought me to today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome, man. So you're trucking along, man, you're, you're building a business, you're doing great, man. All these good things are happening in your life and you get socked in the face by this company called EXP. Right. And it's like, okay. Um, how does the story go for you, man? Because everybody, everybody hears about it differently. Everybody takes it differently. And I'm, I'm curious, how does that, how does, what does that look like? Yeah. So, yeah. So last year, I mean, at the same time I was grinding, I was also meeting with other groups to see if I would just keep my mind open to see if I would be better joining a group or better on my own. So I met with, you know, pretty much every top group in, in Keller Williams, right? I met with Dave DeVoe and, you know, Jeff Bog, Sakuras. We, we all sat down and met. And, you know, at that time, I think what I was looking for was kind of a Keller Williams so big. And I was looking for that tight knit, some, some type of community where I felt that, you know, we were empowering each other. Uh, because I'd show up to work every day. I'd be the only one there at the office prospecting. I mean, I think probably the only one last year that I saw was there was DeVoe and his team prospecting and Secor having meetings. So through talking to Dave, Brett, and Jeff Bonk, uh, who introduced me to EXP, uh, him and his wife have uh, awesome business here uh, in Hoboken. I really aligned with those three, you know, at, out of most groups that I've seen, you know, the prospecting based marketing enhanced philosophy. So I really uh, valued their, their, where they bit, you know, where they came to get their business and where their business is now. Yeah. Um, that was one reason besides all of the benefits that EXP offered was who I was going into business with. Right. You know, these, these, uh, these top teams and top agents, professionals that I really look up to and I can learn from. So that was first and foremost, probably the main decision, right? Yeah. But as you started to drill down with the model of EXP, it opens up a door of flexibility to collaborate with these teams now. So, you know, I go in and talk to a group and I'm looking at the numbers of how, if I joined a team, right, of, of what would be the split and, and how much of my, of my productivity would be taken away. Um, that was a huge issue. So now, you know, you could say the doors open up to more collaboration, right? between an agent that could, could team up with, with a powerhouse, you know, group or small group, right. If the, if the numbers made sense. So I see it, I see it opening up the doors and it, it having flexibility for me, either me growing myself a team now, which I'm in the process of doing or, uh, you know, teaming up. So, you know, I always ask people this um, and it's kind of a trick question but you know, you you really you said something there that that just made this stand out to me because you know if you think about what's more important, the treasure or the map, um, the easy answer is to say the treasure. But the reality of it is, the treasure doesn't exist without the map, right? And so for you, you talked about you said something um, and alluded to you know getting into business with people who 
you felt like could help you get to where you wanted to go, essentially, and provide you the map to the treasure, right? That's what yeah. they're doing. Now they have all the, the, the encouragement in the world and the benefit in the world to help you do that because of the way the model structured at EXP. But I, I want, I, I really hope this hits home, especially to people who are, are maybe investigating EXP or trying to get more information on EXP, is the pay structure is great, but it, the reality of it is you still have to take action. And if you don't know where to make, to take action, to have the biggest impact in your business, it's going to be very hard for you. So when people like Jamie talk about partnering with a Dave DeVoe uh, or a Brett Sikora, right? These are people, these are people that already have been where he was, who now have every benefit in the world of helping him get there. So Jamie, you under, it was the smartest decision you'd ever made, dude, because you understood that it's not always about the money, man. Sometimes it's, it's about the knowledge, right? If I get the knowledge, the money will show up as a byproduct, right? People chase the money and they don't chase the knowledge. They don't realize that if they get the knowledge that the money's going to show up and you realize that. And mm -hmm. so I think people connect with that today because there's not just people like David Bell and Brett Sikora, but we're talking about like the, the, the leaders of the industry, right? Like Jay Kinder, like Kyle Whistle, like Dan Beer, like Al Stacey like um, Curtis Johnson. I mean, these people, these are the biggest names in real estate. And now, you know, we got them on speed. You know what I'm saying? So how powerful is that, bro? That's awesome, man. And, and you know, the fact that it took me so long to leave the family business and that was just a huge, it was just a huge decision for me, right, to jump ship. It took me so long. You know, that being through that just helped me make a decision very quickly with EXP uh, from the standpoint of, you know, staying in the safe, staying, staying in comfort, right, is what most people will do. Sure, uh, sure. But I'm open to looking at the best opportunity for me to, you know, to grow. And uh, EXP provided that um, through not only the, the structure, the revenue share, and, and, you know, of course, the stocks are another story. But really, the people that I'm working with here, uh, you have some of the top agents and groups in, in the entire state here, so or in the country. So, I, I'm just super excited to get started with these with these guys and 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 grow here with EXP. Well, brother, I'm sure I sure I'm glad you partnered. With this. It's it's, uh, it's an honor to have you on, man. So I, I'm curious, man, if if people want to connect with you um, and they want to learn more about how you you grew your business so quickly, um, or they want they have questions about EXP. Maybe they maybe they're right where you're at in in their business and they're thinking about making a move, or they just want to get additional information. So how can they connect with you? Yeah, you could uh, shoot me a text. Uh, my cell phone's 551-427-7107. You could also email me uh, at Jamie, J-A-M-I-E, at move, M-O-V-E, with mooring, M-O-R-E-N-G.com. And, uh, yeah, I'd be happy to talk to anybody that's, you know, thinking about making a move. Uh, I'm, obviously, I can relate to the individual agents or new agents that are coming on and really would be happy to share my uh my story and, and how I could help uh, any, any young professionals getting, getting started here. All right, man. It's been real, Jamie. Thanks so much for taking a couple, couple minutes out of your day, man. I know you, you'd probably rather be prospecting right now, but I, I'm glad you decided to, to share your story with our audience and drop some value today, brother. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike, man. Look forward to growing with you guys. All right. All right. Have a good day. See ya. See ya.